Oh my God, it's Mind Pump time. It's always exciting when we get to talk to you on YouTube about fitness and health and give free stuff away. Guess what we're giving away today? The Foundational Maps Fitness Program, Maps and a Bollock. Here's how you can get free access for life to Maps and a Bollock. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours. Help us out with the YouTube algorithm. We know we're the best podcast. We're not the biggest one yet on YouTube. We need your help with the algorithm. Leave a comment, subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications, and if we pick your comment, you'll get notified that you won free access to Maps Anabolic. One more thing before we get to the episode, we are having a sale, Maps Hit, that's high intensity interval training, and the No BS six pack formula, this is a core and ab training program, or both 50% off. Go check those out, head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com, just use the code July Special with no space for that discount. All right, enjoy this podcast. You're doing the NCI Masterclass yeah. coaching tonight. Ooh, that's right? I'm doing tonight, a huh? Masterclass tonight, so I'm actually pretty excited about it. I was going to ask you about it because I know you're the only one in the group so far that has done one of these. Like, how did it all go? Okay, so little context, right? So this is a this is these are trainers and coaches who sign up to get in more intensive personal coaching to make them better coaches and trainers. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Jason Phillips is the founder of NCI. It's a company that we work with that does these online coaching certification courses. Very, very good. So the only personal training type certification company that we actually align with or work with. Right. Because we like them a lot. Education-wise. Like yes, we like what they do. So anyway, it's he he heads it and he asked us to, to do these courses once a week. So one of us will be on there once a week. And essentially what it is, is Jason asked me a bunch of questions mm -hmm. and I'll answer them and talk about like, he would ask me questions about like, what's the most important attribute of a successful uh, personal trainer, yeah. right? So I talked about, for, you know, I've, I've talked about this before effective on the show, communication. effective communication. So I talk about why that's sure. important. And so we go into all that. And then at the end, there's, you know, I want to say there was about 60 trainers and coaches that were on there. And at the end, that they get they get to ask me questions. Oh, nice. So they were asking things like, um, like one person asked me, you know, how do you get if you have a client who doesn't want to listen to what you're telling them to do, like how do you get them to to comply? You just lie to them. Like that. Yeah, just, <laughs> Adam's <coaching>. force them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. And so I, you know, and I told them the early trainer version of me would have said this, but this is what the older, wiser, experienced version of me, which is that's fine if they're showing up. To the workouts, that's more than what they were doing before. Right, right. Yeah. You inform them, you coach them, you train them, you be honest with them, but then it's up to them and you can't force somebody. But that doesn't mean you kick them out the door. I used to have this mentality, and I know a lot of new trainers have this mentality, which is uh, if you don't do what I say and if you don't get in shape, you can't train with me. Right. Well, not, everybody has the same amount of time in a day, right? Yeah. That, you're not really serious. Yeah, and you're just not really- I was really, so guilty If of you really want to help that. people, the people that need the most help are the ones that have the most challenges with that. You know, that the, the reason why I think that's so prevalent in the space is because it works temporarily. It's kind of like leading from with uh, fear, right? Like yeah. like leaders and managers that that do that. Like uh, if you don't do your job, you're gonna get fired. Yeah. You, you get know, temporary like, oh, buy-in. Yeah, you get temporary buy-in on that. And so I think there's this. I think the feedback uh, loop that you you get as a trainer is that oh, I do this and yeah, I get my mm -hmm. client shows up mm -hmm. and they bring the heat the next time. But what you don't realize is that you're not changing behaviors in them you're not you're not building a new lifestyle mm -hmm. with them you're not changing the relationship they have they're with exercise the ownership of it they're just doing it out of based off of fear yeah purely yeah. out of fear it's just and, like if and there's i no don't long term success with it yeah no, they, they drop off or they become part of the statistic the 85 to 90% of people who yeah. lose weight and then gain it back which is you know, that's almost everybody well i saw some of the subject that we're going to cover and it did look pretty fun oh you see it ahead of time yeah, I mean, I talked to him a little bit ahead of time. I just kind of wanted to get a heads up of like what I was going to cover and like, you know, how to find your niche and, you know, like some of those characteristic traits that make a good coach and things like that. So, um, yeah, it'll be exciting to kind of, you know, uh, see where the conversation leads and see what kind of questions yeah, I get. My, from the my favorite part about all this is, and I haven't had a chance to go, I think I go next Wednesday is, is when I go. Um, it, when Jason's been trying to get, uh, me and us to do this for some time now and one we're extremely busy two uh we are we are so resistant to the mastermind-esque type of group that mm -hmm. we didn't want anything like that and i remember when he came to me I mean, i'll never forget because i drove here really like I, I was on the phone with him for like an hour 
loved what he was doing. Uh, I, it was, I think it was on a, a weekend or a day when I was supposed to not be here and I called you guys and you know, I'm in the studio still. I said, I'm going to mm-hmm. come down. I want to talk to you guys. I remember. Yeah. And I came down here and said, listen to how Jason wants to do this and tell me you guys don't love this idea. And the way he structured it is just, it's awesome because my concern, my knock on these mastermind groups is you pay, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to be involved in this, this you know, quote unquote mastermind group. And uh, most of them are, are just teaching you how to start your own mastermind group and do the same damn thing. And, and plot. it's basically like a pyramid scheme. Type not a of, ton of value. Yeah. Not a, t- not a ton of value on learning how to build a business and expensive. And this is a thousand dollars for a year. I mean, that's crazy. Like, so, and these people have access to one of us, Doug. Doug's going to be on there, Justin, you, Sal, myself, and Jason every single week where they get to interact and ask business questions. And then they have a private forum where they could interact with each other and us mm-hmm. and then also start to set up. So I, what I foresee happening is the initial kind of conversations we all have for the first month or two. And then after they kind of get to know what everybody tends to. Oh, yeah, the questions will probably get more specific. Yes. Uh, to each person. That's what I think is, yeah. is going to happen. And then that, I think that's where the, the tremendous value will come out. Because I think a lot of people don't even know uh, what each one of us kind of specialize in with within the business because we don't right. always talk about that. And, and, you know, people know our personalities from the show. But you know, what, how, how, who does what in the business. And I think as they start to learn that it'll start to drive uh, better questions to ask each one of us. And so I'm, I'm really excited about it. And I love the, I love the idea of, you know, to provide that much value for that lower price. I mean, I would charge more for a one hour phone call by myself, just by itself, mm-hmm. right? So yep. More than $150. And I mean, I was training more, charging more than that for a one hour session. So the fact that these people have access every week to one of us, in addition to Jason, in addition to the private form and all of the coaching tools that he has, I just, I love it. I think it's tremendous value. Yeah. It, uh, trainers will and coaches will always have a, a special place uh, for us. So that's what we did. That's what we did for, for decades. That's what Absolutely. we still are. I mean, if, if you ask me, you know, what I am at my core, that's still, you know, what I am. We just do it. We do it now through a different medium. And, I've said this so many times that I really believe this. Like the the people that have, well, generally speaking, the answers to the health problems that we're facing, which are monumental. I, I don't want to make light of this. Like the obesity in all of the umbrella issues that come because that's an umbrella term, right? All the issues that come under it, and you know, diabetes and Alzheimer's, and you know, I, you, there was a statistic you just talked about how uh, type two diabetes is exploding among children, yeah. which is crazy. Mm. I remember when I first got certified back in nineteen. 19- 97, they called type 2 diabetes adult onset diabetes because kids didn't get it. Yeah. That's in 1997. Today, so many kids are getting it now. Well, first of all, kids started getting it like crazy, so they changed the name. Well, and you say getting it, so people think like you catch it, like it's a disease. No, no, you develop it through you, you poor do, lifestyle. That's what I'm. That's why I think it's important you, you clarify it's that. It's modeled to them. Because if you don't understand that, you go like, oh, that's so weird. Like it was a disease that only adults no. caught just a tw- yeah. two decades ago, but now kids, kids are catch so it. <laughs> unhealthy that they change yeah. the name of, of adult onset diabetes to type 2 diabetes, and it's exploding. And so what does this all mean? All these problems are extremely expensive. They're it, it, and for the for the society, they destroy innovation. They, of course, quality of life is terrible. I mean, there's all these downstream eve- uh, you know effects. So this is a big problem. The solution to that problem isn't found any in any industry except for the fitness and health industry. Okay, we're the only ones that actually have the real. Sol- I'm not saying the whole fitness and health industry because I think a big chunk of it contributed to that problem. But if you want the answers, that's where you're going to find it. And then if we really narrow it down. Who in the fitness and health industry has the answers? Who really will make the real impact? Who can actually solve this real world? Yeah. It's coaches and trainers. Absolutely. So they're the ones on the front lines. It's an extremely rewarding uh, job. It's extremely rewarding career, but it is also a challenging career to build and do successfully. Mm-hmm. So I think it's very important to learn how to do it from people who've done it before. Because I know a lot of people who were very passionate about helping people 
they just couldn't stick it out yeah. because it's well that's what we see and that's why we're so passionate yeah. about doing whatever we can to show up to gyms or to talk to coaches and trainers as much as possible to see if you know if they haven't heard ways that they can better optimize their business and take on uh their business uh in a way where they're going to be able to monetize it and be able to keep it going because i think a lot of times you know we get so passionate about helping people uh, but uh, lose sight of, of how to keep that sustainably going and, and get revenue out of it. Now, have you guys seen stuff that's coming at like AI wise and tech wise that's like entering our space that's really starting to change the game? I asked this question. I was reading an article on, I think, this company. I think it's, uh, I want to say it's Tractable, was the, was the name. Oh, of I've this, seen this. the Gym Pass one. Have you seen that? Where no. you could basically. You, this you, is cool. Yeah, I've you get. I, I forget the name of it, but basically you have like this. this gym pass that you pay a monthly subscription fee and you can go into like a golds or you could go into like a ufc gym or you it could covers go like into so many days a bunch of different for, types yeah. of uh, uh gyms brilliant so it's like the uh gold pass for uh, california when it with the ski resorts oh, okay so there's but now how do they do that because ufc is not affiliated with gold well, they have gold they obviously pay them yeah exactly they pay them um a percentage yeah, or something. a percentage and i'm sure i don't think it's unlimited i don't think you can get the gym pass and then go work out at the same ufc gym all the time I think there's a certain amount of visits, if, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, nonetheless, it's very smart, very oh, yeah. interesting. I'm I, sure that's going to take off more. Is my point? I think it's a brilliant idea. That just probably that needs more awareness so they can get more people using yeah. it, and you know, Jim C value in it. Yeah. Now you you said something. What did you say? What oh, I was just talking about this. It has nothing to do with fitness, but it's what made me because I was. It was like uh, I think it was Tractable. This company called Tractable, and it, it got a one billion dollar valuation, and they were taking on fifty or sixty million dollars or something. And it, it's actually like for insurance companies and it's just going to completely flip and change how insurance is done because it's all done through, uh, it's basically appraisals through your phone. So the, you, we can walk around the car and they'll, it'll see the damage that's done to a car and it'll easily calculate like based wow. off the car model, this, like that, give you, huh. so yeah, it's going to, you know, appraises, appraisals and adjusters that come out for cars. Like that's a big process, wow. right? If you get in a car accident, they send out, the insurance company sends out an adjuster, adjuster comes out gives their appraisal on what it'll be. It's like a whole process to do that. And this app makes you do that all, it does it all virtually and instantaneously give you that. So brilliant. And I was just thinking like, man, you know, I, I'm seeing this stuff all the time come out in the space. And I, I feel like the fitness space is always so behind to come out with tech to to support what we're doing. Yeah, I, the thing yeah. that I could see that would really, that might potentially have a huge impact would be something that, because now they have those, what, continual glucose monitors, right? So you put it on, mm -hmm. And it measures your glucose response kind of in real time. So you know how you respond to certain foods and stuff. I would love to see something like that that measures metabolism in real time, measures glucose in real time, inflammatory markers in real time. Then you go on your phone and it's also connected to restaurants and food. And, and it literally will tell you, here, eat this meal at 600 and something calories because you're burning this many right now with your metabolism. And it's got this many carbs because this is your... And it literally just tells you what to do, when to do it. Now, I don't think that's a long-term solution, but mm -hmm. I could see a lot of people I, doing that and getting incredible results I it's think coaching we, in real time. I think we are not too far off from being able to sit down and eat. And as you're eating the food, your iPhone watch is like the macros are filling up. So you could look, so like let's say you'll like be able each to, bite. Yes, like it'll be able to, <laughs> you know, or maybe as the plate, like maybe you'll yeah. be able to take a screenshot. Not you get a chip in, in your Maybe you'll be able body. to screenshot the plate, yeah. and then so when you clean the plate yeah, that, off, that it'll automatically be, go. It'll you know. You probably scan the food, but right, like but, I don't yeah. think we're that far. Actually, do, that that sounds like you should be able to do. They that. have some yeah. things that are some, some. So you could screenshot it and it'll calculate. This yeah, I don't, I don't know how accurate those are yet, but I think that I've tried that. Yeah, when we get that down to where it's going to be that easy, where someone could look at their their iPhone and go and see if they're plus or minus on their calories for their day. What a, what a cool accountability tool for somebody who's getting ready to go sit down and eat the restaurant. They're like, Oh wow. I only have like two Man, or three hundred calories. Me, uh, I'm frustrated because I can't remember the guy's name that we befriended and we brought him in here to the studio before oh, yeah, who was yeah. working on this incredibly audacious goal of bringing all the sensors involved with fitness and with nutrition and like organizing it in one platform. And then it would basically like give you HRV, gives you glucose, you know, monitor. Yeah, glucose monitor, like activity like, level, dude, like everything yeah. all on one panel, like way, way more robust than, than like uh, Apple's health or Google's health. Oh, app. not only that, I remember he, what the way he was building it was to where like, so your glucose monitor would show like, 
um, what restaurants would complement like your, exactly your kind of like what you're talking about. Yeah, your Sal. dietary needs. So if these types of foods affect you yeah. negatively, and this these are yeah, the following restaurants are within a ten mile radius. Yeah, that exactly. Work with your, yeah, yeah that's here, what, here's the items on that that menu that would work best for you. Yeah, but then it would they would end up uh, partnering with other restaurants and lying. Well, uh, Carl's, <laughs> Ju- uh, Carl's Jr. It would uh, get immediately yeah. corrupted. Well, and then the other bacon thing, Western beef. Then the other thing that I always go back to, and I and with when it comes to fitness, like are all these things just kind of band-aids anyways like yeah. is is normally the real reason why somebody is severely is obese right because that's a ba- we're not trying to solve somebody getting down to 5% body fat and getting shredded because from- that's the people who I think will benefit the most from this like crazy tech i don't think it's the people with who really need to work on internal issues to deal with food and right so that's what my point right yeah. so the people that are already fitness fanatics it reminds me of what our buddy craig right when his his and i don't have no idea if it, this still exists or if he's still trying to get it off the ground but you know his 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 programming thing that was like you know it was supposed to it was supposed to progressively overload and supposed to figure the math out for you so you just show up to the gym and these yeah. exercises and it's like it's so nuanced and so much data you had to input to figure out to get this back. It's like you have to be a fitness fanatic to even use this tool. And it's like you're yeah. and you're not really solving the 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 obesity issue that's out there and helping those people. I There's remember, the real market. Yeah, I remember meeting uh, this lady when we were doing our live events and she was saying that um, she was going through like this school for for therapy but also wanted to be a trainer at the same time and like combine both those practices. And, and I That'd was be like, great. this is brilliant. I was like, I, I wonder if there's going to be a new certification eventually, you know, that will combine both of those, uh, uh, you know, different institutions together because that's, I mean, that's what we're always talking about is human behavior is, well, is the biggest they, they might. The problem is when you're talking about therapies, there's so many uh, like barriers. There's a lot of uh, rules and regulations of how much, how many courses you take, how many people you work with. It would be a long process unless they called it something else like they do with like life coaching or, you know, um, they make up yeah, shit like that. Like, right. you know, there's a name and it doesn't require yeah. really any education. So yeah. they don't, you know, I can't, I'm not a therapist, but I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a life quality enhancer or whatever, you know? Mm. So, you know, I mean, you, you, you say that kind of sarcastically, but the truth is, man, uh, you know, who would you rather work with? Somebody who just finished their eight years of their psychology degree or the person that's worked who's 65 years old and has worked with oh, I, I, 3,000 people that I, has no certification? Well, yeah, you know my answer, of course. Right. Absolutely. But you know. I mean, if you wanted to do it, and you wanted to say you also did therapy, the, the laws would require you of course, to have certain types. Unfortunately. Of, but I, I can't think of more complimentary. Uh, honestly, it's so complimentary to personal training. Oh, no. Be, when we were right. when we were touring, touring around and doing the trainer talks and stuff like that, I remember meeting a trainer who was going through school, and they had a, a Kinesi uh, major and a minor in psychology. And I, said, I don't think you could pick a better, you know, maybe it would be the other way around. Yeah. You know, a major in psychology, minor in Kinesi or something would be, even better possibly right because i think you even need more of the mm-hmm. psychology I, I mean looking back now as far as like my career as a trainer uh i i thought the x's and o's i thought the, all the certifications mm-hmm. and the education around kines and stuff would be the answer to being a great trainer and it it plays a significant role don't get me wrong yeah but i think that the the, the psychology aspect and, and behavioral sciences played a, a much larger impact on the the real yeah, success the problem is that we don't have access to information. You're right. It's there. You yeah. know, and, and I, I really do feel like there needs this to be this intervention yep. of uh, understanding your own behaviors and how this is no. affecting everything. This is a co- it's a complex problem. Yeah. And, and I think one of the things that contributed to it was the the development of suburbs and freeways and you know if you live in you know more modern developments, I'd say since the 1950s, which is a lot of America, maybe even before that. You live where there's houses, and if you want to get anywhere, you have to drive. There's you don't walk anywhere. If you look at, by the way, if you look at the health of people that live in cities where it's not conducive to own a car, mm-hmm. you see healthier people. Why they just move more? Like yep. it doesn't make sense to own and drive a car if you live in a metropolitan city where there's no parking, there's all kinds of. Dr- so what do you do? You you walk or you take the subway or you take it, but you have to walk to all these places. That's one. Two. Activity needs to be a cultural ph- phenomenon. Like if you go in in certain Asian countries uh, and you wake up early in the morning, they have these parks and you see all these people out there practicing Tai Chi or stretching or exercising. 
nobody told them to do that. It's a cultural thing. It's like, mm -hmm. this is just kind of what we do yeah. uh, every day. That's the other thing that has to happen. And then the third thing that has to happen is we have to destigmatize resistance training because the average person doesn't pick up dumbbells and barbells because they think that's for bodybuilders. That's just what you do when you want to get big. Not realizing that one hour a week of doing that would give them way more benefit than spending four hours a week doing other forms of exercise. Yeah, I think yeah. that's the four prong kind of. Did you guys solution. see our buddy, uh, you know, Jordan Syatt, our buddy, uh, he moved from New York to Texas. I don't know if you guys know that. I did. See that. Did you see that he's getting his license right now? I know. He didn't have one. For the first time ever. How wild is that? Oh, wow. You don't need one. I know. Well, that's, I mean, he, he grew up, I think, most of his life over there. And you, to your point, you know, you walk everywhere or take a cab or Uber. You can definitely get away with it in New York. Yeah. Right? I just think that's fascinating for something. My, my brother did that. He moved to San Francisco. He moved out now. So he bought a car. But when he moved there, it was like four years ago, he sold his car because he never used it. And to park it cost him 300 or 400 bucks a month <laughs> to yeah, park crazy. his car. Yeah. And he's like, this is dumb. I don't even use my car. Sold it. And that was it. He didn't have a car for years. Now, I totally get it, and and, and it makes total sense to me and so that. But personally, I I like to drive. Mm -hmm. yeah, I but love, if, you're, if, you're not, if everywhere you go, you can't drive to. No, I, I mean, yeah, but that's, okay, everywhere uh, most of the time. Like, you can't tell me that you don't drive out of the city sometimes. And when he would, which is, you know, how you often would he do that? Twice a month? Right? Exactly. Yeah. He would rent a car. Yeah. He would just rent one of those. Uh, they actually have these, these, like, these new apps where you can rent a car from yeah what is it called it's called um like some it, personal owner yeah oh you're talking about that one so yeah. there's different type there's uh what they're called zip cars there's oh, zip yeah, cars which is like a, you know they they give you, you know, there's an app you go over there's a code to get in the car oh no he was renting it from it's like a it's like uh what's it called like airbnb it, but with yes cars. and then there's those that are like airbnbs for cars and you can actually rent like someone's bmw he was doing that yeah yeah be now, because a lot of people over there, their cars weren't doing shit during the week or on the weekend. So he's like, he'd go on and they were cheap. That wow. means because it's just sitting there. Think about it. If you own a, a car and you're not using it ever on the weekend, you would allow I wonder, someone to pay I wonder bucks. what that price point has to be to be really Maybe. equitable for the, the car <laughs> owner to do yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. It'd have to, I'd have to see like how that would be. Right. I own, I own this beautiful M5 and I'm not driving it because I live in the city and I have it there, but how much do I need to make to make you it worth- You can drive my hoopty. Yeah, you know right? I mean? How much, how much are you, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out like how much would you have to pay me to make it worth my while to let you borrow my car and put a thousand yeah, miles on it? Like, smell <laughs> like whatever you smell like. Is that, a, is that a, a thing right there, Doug? It's called- Turo, supposedly oh, yeah, the heard of that. largest uh, car sharing Click service on one out of those there. Cars. Yeah, give me, yeah, give me, a, give Click me a on that Tesla. Yeah, the 2018 Tesla Model yeah, Three. Give me, give Three. Oh wow, it's ranked just nice. like uh, Airbnbs too, or like the two hundred six dollars a day. There you go. Twenty and there's no, there's got to be a mileage. Two hundred and six. Two hundred and six. The, the, the mileage limit. Yeah. Uh, let's see. There's got to be a mileage limit, but you can't just 200 days. Someone could drive it all the way down to San Diego and back, and we'd be screw you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like you have to. There's got to be because the wear and tear in your car. If you're 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 making a couple hundred bucks, but 206 bucks a day is good. That's good yeah. money. And that, but that's a Tesla. Yeah, I wonder day? what like a regular uh, right. sedan would be. I'm because I'm sure Teslas are a little bit more. You think yeah. so? Yeah, I would oh, think so. Yeah. Yeah, Why would you think so? More of a luxury well, it's because it's electric and it's you know it's cool. Mm. Oh, well, there's a there's a BMW 4 Series. That one's how much? One hundred and seven dollars. One hundred and seven bucks. Tw Twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen, yeah. but it looks nice. Look at that. Yeah, it's a 4 Series too. It's a smaller. I bet a bigger BMW would be more expensive. That's not very expensive though. One hundred seven for the day. Yeah. Actually, why don't we rent cars from that place? Instead of what <laughs> yeah, we always right? do. No, that's actually a good point, Doug. What do we yeah, pay for our car this. that we parked in the drive? Yeah. Three hundred. Yeah, we we rented a car down in uh, Utah. Yeah. And it was three hundred and some dollars, and I drove it from the airport to the hotel, and then we came back the next day from the hotel to the airport. Wow. You, you might as well got a scooter. That was yeah, a waste yeah. of money. We yeah. uh, we that did that fault. another time too, didn't we? Go somewhere? We've we done that, yeah, we've done that two Denver. Or three times now. Yeah, in Denver, we got two black like uh, SUVs. Big SUVs. Ones. Yeah. yeah. That one I can't say same with my fault was. This one was my <laughs> fault. This one, this last one was my fault because Jerry asked me. She goes. Do you want a, a rental car uh, because Brooke is going to pick you and Doug up from the airport? And I said, you know what? I don't want to be per, uh, trapped. I said, I don't. So we're going to be there for two days. I don't have it. I haven't at this point. I haven't met her in person. I, haven't, I don't know any of these people. I don't like the feeling of feeling <laughs> trapped. Right. So I told her, I said, you know, get it, get it uh, for us. And then Doug and I so will. Now we're going to my parents' house. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just, no. Right. I didn't want it. I didn't want that. Right. So I, was, I said, we'll meet you there. But we ended up. 
having a girl. That's when you to- fuck up and someone like you're with someone and then you mess up, you answer wrong. Like, hey, so what are you doing later? Oh, not really nothing. Oh, cool. Yeah. You want to just, why don't you just come yeah. with me? Like, oh, Ooh, yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I'm doing a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. I forgot all I'm hella busy. Things. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? Hey, you know, do you think that, because your boy's two, he just turned two. Yeah. That's right. Happy mm-hmm. birthday to your yeah. son. Yeah. Happy I can't, birthday, be- by the way, I cannot believe that. This time, not, okay. Yeah, now that you have a flying, kid, man. Does, do you experience this now? Yeah, well, it it, uh, it hits uh, hyperdrive uh, after one. Yeah. So, like, I really do feel like the first six months, it couldn't go fast enough. Like, I was like, please, God, <laughs> get this kid to a place where he can sit up, right? Like, I just I just remember, I remember thinking, I, I mean, the first, let us okay, let me back up, the first month, amazing, right? Like, just eating it up. You got this, this new human that you created. <laughs> And it's a little version of you, and all he does is sleep on your chest. And so I gobbled That's all that. That's when you were talking shit, by the way. Right, 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 right. Oh, it's easy, guys. I, I don't know what everybody's about talking Adam about. Adam and I, are, I mean, Justin and I are looking yeah. at each other like, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he, he didn't cry for like the first week or two, know, you know? know? Which, looking back now, I realized, well, he was a preemie for four he weeks. Thought so he, he was still in the he womb. Still you're, thought you're he was all hopped womb, up so. on adrenaline, too, <laughs> yeah. you know? You're like, yeah, yeah, right. I was all in a high and everything like that. It's my first boy and everything like that. So, yeah, I was eating it up for like the first month. Just amazing. But then I got cabin fever. Then it was just like all we do was sit around. I mean, I watched more television that that, oh, that man, six months. So many recommendations. Oh, he gets mad at us that we weren't watching these shows. Oh, I know like, I was. We I was can't like, keep up, I dude. burned through so many series, and I was like, I could definitely, I could have done a side business on reviewing Netflix shows, right? So uh, that was uh, the first month, and then from I would say month two to six. That felt forever. I mean, it really did feel like the Twilight Zone, the same thing. You know, you, you he's getting up every two yeah. hours and feeding, and you're just, you're at home all day long. And it just, it, that that was like, please, God, please get to a place where this kid could just <laughs> sit up and do his own thing for a little bit, you know? Entertain himself. Yeah, yeah. so so then, then it gets to that point, and then it gets really fun because – Every every day almost feels new and a new thing he's learning or his face is changing or he's growing and Yeah, right. but when you see pictures of him when he was like six months old or four months old, are you like, Oh my god, that that was so fast? Like, like I felt like a long time ago, but it happened so fast. It does uh, it does feel that way, but I'm so into his age right now yeah. that I don't like, oh I missed that. Like there's like I'm getting ev- you all You see old pictures like Later, yeah, I'm glad yeah. That gone. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, everything that he uh, that I liked that he was doing when, um, because you know, a lot of people say this too, like, oh, enjoy. Oh, by the way, I tell you guys this because I, when we talk about, um, I talk about like wanting to have this bond with Max forever, mm-hmm. and and like the the prevailing thing that everybody says to me is just like, enjoy it while it lasts, mm-hmm. you know, like. I had I got this lady wrote me like the sweetest DM and said, "Hey, I listen to every episode and I love you what you guys are doing and I just want you to know you just keep doing what you're doing because my husband and my you should see and my son, he's 25 years old and they've been inseparable since birth and he sounds just like you the way you guys are together oh, that's and nice. they're the best of friends that's and nice. many of the family members are jealous of their relationship because they're so bonded and so tight." So uh, he's, she's, I think she even said, fuck everybody who tells you <laughs> that enjoy it while it lasts because yeah, you can create that for yourself. You can build that relationship. So anyways, yeah, I, 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 I hope that continues, right? We have that kind of bond right now where uh, all the good stuff that I had in the first early months, I'm still getting that right now. Yeah, so That's great. That's crazy board. that he's two. But I was going to say, because he's two, my youngest of is eight months. So do you think, so your son's going to be 16 in 14 years. My son will be in about 15 years. Do you think that they'll be by that point driving their own cars? Or do you think by that point they're going to, it's going to be a total waste of time to get a license because you're going to get on an app and a, and a, a, dri- a car's going to drive itself to them and drive them off? I mean, we've Ooh. talked about this before. Right? I mean, think about it. That's like 15 years from now. So it could, it could theoretically. A lot can happen even, yeah. Well, like I think before the uh, autonomous cars happen, I do think companies like Uber are going to figure out the, you know, annual fee to have access to Uber all the time. Meaning that they so like, you pay a fee and it's unlimited access. That's right. That's right. So that's already been kind of they've wow. already kind of mathematically figured it out that they can and supposedly it's feasible already to make it more cheaper to have this Bro, access. It could be hundreds of dollars to, a month. It, it would be cheaper than paying for car payment, insurance, and gas. That's what I'm saying. So the I think they, they've done the math on oh, like, wow. what is the lower average of a car payment and insurance oh for the God, average that person? A, that's a game changer. What does it cost? And would it be feasible 
to if people if all those same people had a you know annual membership to Uber, which basically gives them their their card and they can go and use as many rides whenever they want and do whatever that, and it would still be, it would be a win for both parties. That's brilliant. So I think that. Before autonomous cars happen, sure. and well, that is most likely going to be in. I by think our, that's longer than we think. I, well, I think it's lo- the autonomous cars are what yes. I'm saying. Well, that's autonomous the, cars. That's so do I. Laws regulations and, yeah. in government, and do we see how everything's getting so crazy, like dysfunctional? Just you know, just just what they're trying to sift through right now is insane. And to to try and introduce like innovation, I think we got to clean up a lot of well, shit. Well, look how start look innovating at, again. Look how long it's taking to move to the electric car direction. I mean, gas should be kind of obsolete with cars when you think about it. I mean, the amount of power that Tesla can can generate, how efficient it really is, we really should convert all that way. But what it's it's, still it's still not cost effective to point to the point where people buy electric cars instead of gas. Yeah, so it's gonna. So I do think before we see autonomous cars, I I agree with you, Justin. I think that's further out. But But I do think what I I is no that that sounds pretty. Pretty reasonable. Yeah, but 15 years is a, is, is a decent amount of time. Now, the challenge is going to be, how do we have autonomous cars on the road with people driving cars? That's going to be the challenge, what that's yeah. going to look like. But 15 years, bro, a lot can change in 15 years. Think about like 15 years ago, think of the- if, of, yeah, Who's um, going to be our president and who's going to be you know the person at the helm that's going to lead all that? I'm pretty like, sure that's when know. The Rock will be the president by <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, for yeah. sure. The that's, Rock, huh? No, no, that's when the aliens- I bank on it. I'm telling you right now, the Rock. The, I'm, I'm going to call that it is in the next- The Rock? Yes. He's hinted at it. In right? the next decade and a half. Like he, so, but, but by that time, I think he Can will- we just the drop president. the whole celebrity I know, uh, dude. thing it's with a, our government? It's, it's, it, it's a popularity contest. It is. So and it's and it's always been and I'm, back in the days you it used to be who had the most money to be able to get out there and campaign and manipulate the most amount of people with the power of the internet and social media and you already like can it be a problem solver like an Elon, Elon Musk kind of guy you know or a girl that cuz they're not out there like making real changes. they're not liked enough we don't want smart people dude it's stupid we want likable decide you know people that, that divide everybody i think is what we want <laughs> I, you know what? It, I swear, it's more and more looking like the movie Idiocracy. You guys have to see the it's movie. It's 100 Idiocracy. Idiocracy. I know you still haven't seen that. No, we're, we're de- that this guy, evolving. This guy's like he's like uh, frozen cryo, you know, cryogenically or whatever. He wakes up and he's in way in the future, and he's a regular like average dude, right? But what ended up happening while he was being frozen was that dumb people had way more yeah. kids than smart people. So over time. Everybody they got really stupid. Them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? And, yeah. and is this so a he, new movie or is no, it old no, it's old. Movie. It's, oh, but yeah. Mike Judd was was he the one that did I it? I think so. I think the guy think that so. beat us in butthead. Yeah, yeah, so he comes out and he's a regular guy when he went down in, but when he comes out now he's, he's brilliant. He's, yeah, he's genius. <laughs> and the president of the America of the US is this pro wrestler. Yeah. And they everybody and they're drinks. all sponsored. Everybody's sponsored by like all these yeah. like companies. What was it called? Bron- Brando or Bron- I don't know. It was this drink that's like it's got electrolytes, and they they yeah. feed the plants it, and they can't figure out why their crops they're, are dying. They're, they're, everything's dying. But yeah, yeah he's, a, he's a pro wrestler president. And I'm like, oh, we're so close, dude. You know what? We're that so re- close. What to you gotta rewatch that. What you just said reminds me of something. And I think we shared this years ago uh, when we remember when we went to the. I took you guys to the SmackDown thing with uh, Craig at the at the. I surprised you with the tickets to the wrestling. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. right. Oh, my God, I forgot about that. Bomb right. on us. Yeah. Something- That's the only thing I remember about <laughs> yeah, like, it. Who was that? It was, was that Craig. It was Craig. It was Craig, yeah, it was Craig. He it was dropped blasted us. Beefer in there. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. No. But the thing that I, what you just reminded me of though. with uh, the president being a, a wrestler and being sponsored by everything like that, you remember how wild it was to, um, like I hadn't been to one of those events since I was like a really little kid. And it was, so it's evolved a lot. I mean, it's, uh, they found so many ways to monetize it. I know. That yeah. it's it became this, you know, six hour long production. It wasn't mm-hmm. like a one hour, two hour type of match. Like going, It was like six hours and they had it broken up with all these commercials. And they had commercials with brands like Doritos and Pepsi, stuff that nobody else gets to see. It's just uh, the people in the yeah, arena. Cause yes, because they the were wrestlers that are promoting it. Yes. Right? Yeah, these videos, I know. I was really was fascinated brilliant. by that. that there's this, this whole other world in there that you don't, if you, unless you're in it, you wouldn't even see those commercials or experience anything like that. I was wondering, like, how much money do you think is 
in that in, in the advertising space in and I don't even I don't know what know, you would, but I don't even know what Doug would Google to figure that out. Like what it what you know what I was tripping out on was uh, you know those old games like Sims and you know some mm -hmm. of those virtual reality even you like build World a city? Warcraft and yeah. you know these things that are like fully immersive that people like spent like a, an exorbitant amount of time in and had friendships there even like made relationships virtually with people inside like this whole game and they would like change themselves completely and like be this like dragon with this huge penis and like all <laughs> really random crazy stuff right yeah. and i'm like this like literally looks like what's happening in the real world now yeah, yeah. like like literally like that same like mentality and concept it's 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 just weird like leaped from the virtual into reality well i think that uh, i think player one did such a good job of yeah, depicting this. yeah i mean i i do think that we're we're this close to something very similar to that where you know virtual i mean isn't that the, the i always forget the name roblox is that the name yeah, is that roblox, how i say it? roblox yes. is the kids thing that your playing. kids are all to now they're doing aren't they doing virtual yeah basically fake concerts. Yeah, there's games concerts. within games inside it you know and they're yeah. all they, but they're doing they're holding like massive uh concerts virtually but you go on roblox to watch yeah it. you you probably I, I think if this is how it works I, I think you you get your roblox character which an avatar you build yeah. right mm -hmm. so your character attends these concerts and gets to mingle with all oh, the no. other people that attended it and you have to pay to get into it right uh -huh. yeah. so i mean i and i did maybe well doug's away from a computer right now but I, i'm curious to uh who's done i know there's some artists that have done it already i think travis scott did it and I think he, they made millions and millions of dollars doing this, like virtually. That's, well, throwing a concert in Roblox. Yes, yeah, well, yep, I'm gonna crazy. look it up. Yeah, I'm gonna look it up right now. Yeah, back to what you were saying though about this major celebrity being president. It'll be a YouTube star or something like that. Oh, a, a TikTok. Oh, no, That'll be the. That's it. It's one of the Paul brothers. Yes. Ugh. Don't. It's gonna happen, oh, dude. dude. It's gonna be one of these TikTok stars or whatever. It's gonna be like, I'm gonna be president. I'm gonna fix everything. Ah, uh, no, you're not. Yeah, we need to go to. I'm going to go to Mars. That's <laughs> happening, dude. Get me, get me on that fucking rocket. Dude. Yeah, I'm out of here. Hey, so uh, speaking of uh, you know whatever, Adam, yes. are you going to miss us because we're going to Hawaii and you're not? <laughs> he, I, well, well, he, let he, me get he already has a vacation on November 13 and 14th. Little Nas X dazzled the world with a virtual concert experience performed entirely within Roblox. Not only was it a first of its kind achievement for both Little Nas X and Roblox, but it attracted more than 30 million visits to his show stopping spectacle. But was across he still lap dancing Satan? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, but that's the important yeah. thing. Yeah, that's important. Well, I'm more right. interested in it, how much people pay to get in because it attracted 30 million I, people. That's true, huh? Roblox for, is for kids, and they had it's lap a, dancing. It's a over strange Satan choice. Guy. Strange choice. Yeah, good job. Now guys. back to your Hawaii thing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, because we're going and you're not. Are you feeling? Are you going to miss us? Yeah, I'm going to miss you guys. I'm going. I, I always do when we're not here for a while. If, if we don't see each other, we'll so. send you lots of pictures and stuff from the yeah the pool. And yeah, I want to see. I want to see Justin all tanned and abbed up. That's what. I, that's what I'm actually. <laughs> I'm yeah. I'm Sal, Sal's gonna bring his banana hammock, so yeah. uh, <laughs> I bring you one too. I'll, I'll get to see now. That. Are you guys yeah, actually? So I'm trying to think. Have we have we done like a tropical week vacation together? We haven't done like a Cabo, Mexico, or no. anything. No, no, yeah. we, we have one planned in maybe. a couple Next of years, year, right? Maybe. Yeah. Right? So we we haven't. So I don't. How are all of you guys? I've done it with Justin before. Justin and I have been on trips like this before. Yeah, we're good um, vacation buddies. I'm funny, like with with the way I am with vacation, right? So I'm not the the most fun to be with, and mm -hmm. just being like normal. You mean like, like a homebody? <laughs> <laughs> he's like a homebody in another place. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, okay, cool. When I vacation, like my type of vacation, so it's like my sister and her husband, Tom, are like the complete opposite. Yeah, they're adventurers. They're, like they yeah. decide we're going to go somewhere and weeks leading up to the vacation, they he does yeah, research. I love them for He that. researches the all the five star and the local places to go for food and the, the places of, of, that, that you want to see that nobody knows about. Like, I mean, he does his homework. And then after he does his homework, he plans out his whole week. Okay, Monday, we're going to get up at this time. We're going to go here. We're going to do these things, spend the half day there. We're going to go, we're going to stop at this place, which is down the road and eat there. Yeah, yeah. Then we're, you know, like that. I am like, fuck no. I don't want <laughs> none of that. I don't yeah. want to do any of that. I want to go there and not plan anything. And maybe stay in my infinity pool the entire See, week. This yeah. is what I do. I, I I go back and forth between Tom and then Adam. <laughs> yeah. you know, and I just kind of stack it out because I like both those uh, approaches, but uh, it depends on what mood yeah. I'm in. Nowadays, I'm probably more like you where I'll, I won't do anything, especially because we have the baby. Mm -hmm. But before, when, when Jessica and I would go on trips, we were such good 
uh, vacation partners because we like to adventure. Now, we don't do what your brother-in-law does where we really go crazy, but what we like to do is wake up early. We typically work out together. I love working out on vacation because I can take my time and enjoy it. And then we get in the car and we just go explore. And I love that. I love driving places, exploring different restaurants. Mm-hmm. Let's go see, meet different people, hang out at this bar, hang out. A, and then it's just really, really fun. Sitting in one place the whole time, um, I don't know. I don't know if I could. I get criticized for that because, it, you know, everyone's like, well, what's the point of going to this place because you want to you know, find out about the culture and do all this. And I totally get it. So if you're that person, I understand. And I think, you know, more power to you. But And I've done that before. But what I feel like on a trip like that, I want another vacation when I get fucking home. Yeah, yeah. I get home and that's I feel a, like I've been going, point. going, going, and I'm tired. And then I just want to take a week off of work, which is the opposite You're of the what- the oldest guy I know. <laughs> 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 right? Like, I, w- I want to go on a vacation and I want to just, I want to be pampered. I want to relax. I want to enjoy, I want to I want to eat. I want to sleep. I want to uh I know what to get you. So, so dude, if it, like, I base it off of like how I wake up in the morning. If I got energy, I'm like, okay, we're doing shit today. <laughs> you know, if I, if I'm like, ah, uh, I'm like struggling. Why am I, why am I struggling to do something? Like, no, I'm just going to stay here and relax, chill and yeah. whatever. So yeah, it's totally I, like, I mean, we're day. probably more like each other. Cause I'm also, I mean, I'm saying that, but I'm also not like a, you know, if Justin said, Hey, let's go fly fishing today or let's go do this. I'm like, I'm down. Like, let's go do that. I just right. don't, I don't want it's It's gotta be on my terms. Like yeah. it, it can't be planned. It can't be planned ahead because I don't know how I'm going to yeah, feel. I'm not yeah. I don't know if on much. if Tuesday night I'm going to have drank until 11, 12 o'clock at night partying, right? And then hungover feeling in the morning. And yeah. then you asked, that was the day we're supposed to go on the yeah. seven mile hike I, up a mountain. I know what to get you for your 40th now. <laughs> I'm going to get you a nice spa treatment <laughs> package. All day, you go there, massage, facial. Hey, I wouldn't hate on that. You know, I wouldn't relax. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate on that That's for sure. That's totally something. I know, do. no, I do. I do like and you know and more so as i've gotten older like uh that type of stuff i probably would have scoffed at in my 20s a massage or a spa no i I like to either party really hard or do go out and check things out uh, and then relaxing is third but like i said now that we have a baby we're probably gonna relax now speaking of partying and you guys going out to hawaii you need to make sure i I just saw jerry ordered i don't know if it was specifically for you guys another hunter pack that's for us the z-biotics Ooh, yeah, yeah, well, it's in the back still, Let's so you knuckleheads better not himself. forget it, or else you're going to regret it. No, I know this guy will be drinking pretty much every day. <laughs> oh yeah, so and I'm going to be hanging out with him, so I'm, I'm going to have to influence keep up. you. Oh yeah. I'm gonna now, who's up. more likely to drink more with uh, you or Jessica? Who's more likely to drink? more? Oh well, no, uh, well Jessica not that much. Well, she she has an interesting reaction to alcohol sometimes. Sometimes oh, it makes really? her feel yeah. Sometimes she'll get migraines. These she days, enjoys she, whiskey though, which I like. She likes the flavor. Yeah, yeah, she likes. She, she drinks like an old, an old established man. You know, she likes like yeah, yeah. you know yeah. whiskey and <laughs> yeah, like the refined. Yeah, I like the know. PD. You know, she, I don't know the word she uses to describe or whatever. I, I'm the fruity drink person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, hey, we have all the lava flows. Yeah. Hey, like, we order drinks when we would go on vacation. We'd order the guy. Drinks. I guarantee the waiter brings over yes your her yes. drink to you and the other way around. Oh, isn't that funny? Yes. Uh, who got the whistling? You know, whistling pig whiskey or whatever the name is. And yeah. like, no, that's hers. Yeah, uh, I'll take. The, I got the. Pe- I got, I got the-, the watermelon mojito. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh my God. But I, no, I, I think what the drink the, the of, of choice for me is probably going to be vodka tonic because. Lots of sugar with alcohol, not a good combination. No, that's honestly, yeah, and even Courtney's moved to that just because it's refreshing and it's not a whole lot of uh, sweet, sugary stuff to yes. deal with. Yeah, know. but I also feel like that is one of the best things that Zbotic does so well. I feel like if I have that, I can get away. I can get away with a lot. I can get away. I, with, I can too. I can yeah, get away with mixing. I know, that's why it's dangerous. I can get away so, with yeah, this, you, the, the sweet drinks. Way. Yeah, I can get away with a lot now. If I don't, I got to be very careful on how many I have. I got to be careful on what alcohols I yep. choose. Uh-huh. But the Z-Biotic, I swear I can get away with a way more shit. Well, it's- I can too, which makes it a little dangerous. <laughs> yeah. then I tend to push it a little bit. So. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm pretty. Katrina, on the other hand, she'll drink every day. Like she loves going out with oh, Justin. Oh yeah, and your Courtney. girl's got I, four livers. Yeah, See, t- it's t- funny because like I'm like, I'm not gonna drink. Or then like Katrina, I'm like oh let's have a drink, you guys. I'm like yeah, great idea. Yeah, you know? <laughs> it's your idea, not mine. Yeah. I tease her so much about it that she hides it every once in a while when she does it. Like so, like she'll have like there's been times where like you know we're doing stuff in the house. Maybe I went upstairs. I just got home from work, and a lot of times I shower as soon as I get home, and she's with the baby and stuff, and. 
I come down and I see that she's got looks like a Diet Coke on the counter and I grab it and I just sip it and it's kind of like, alcohol. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking Tuesday. What are you doing? On a she's like, relax. My day's ending right now. I wanted to have one. I've been good all week. And this I'm like, listen, look at you, yeah. dude. I'm yeah. more of an edible person. That's what I'll do. I'll do more of the the cannabis edibles. I think. Oh, that'll that feel, put me down. Yeah, those dude. are nice too. Yeah, that yeah. puts no. That's I chill, bro. That. Yeah, if you're at the pool and you have a nice, you know, even edible. edibles tend to unless it's the right one and it has to be the right one and it's always hit and miss for me. It, it well, maybe because you take too much, dude. I've seen you. <laughs> you got to find your you brand. Go you got to find your dose. They can make me sleepy. Perfect. Well, yeah, if you take 70 milligrams of That's what I take to feel it. How many you got in there? Oh. No, that's not true. Hey. I mean, I've been I've been off of smoking that much that I'm I'm super lightweight right that's now. Good. Yeah, yeah. Like to, cause I took that whole month off and then it, even since then I've yes. I've intermittently been been smoking and so I had to be careful because it doesn't take. That very was my much. favorite thing. That was my favorite story of you. Is like, you, <laughs> we, I don't. People send us shit all the time. We get this oh, bottle yeah, of that, like, it's oh, like yeah. liquid something, and it's got cannabis in it. Oh yeah. And this is literally what Adam does. He drinks the whole thing, and then he hands it to me. and He goes, "How much is in this? So it tastes good." Yeah. Like, he drank the whole thing. So yeah. how much is well, in? Well, I, I and then I look at it, and I'm like. I did the math. I'm like 10 milligrams. There's this many servings. I'm like, bro, you just had 75 milligrams of THC. <laughs> well, I you remember call about a ride. To go on a ride. I remember when the guy, the the rep who brought it to us, I forgot the brand of the company that that, that this was, so I should shout him out. But uh, <laughs> yeah, they, thanks for drugging <laughs> my friend. Well, maybe I shouldn't for this reason, right? Because I remember he brought him to me, and he was like, you know, oh, these are really mild, and you know, and I'm like, oh, okay, like thinking that it was no big deal. And of course, that's like stoner. T- I I guess I have a stoner like look to me. Me, so maybe, yeah. you know, like from one stone or another, like, oh, these are light, bro. Yeah, you know right. no big deal. Yeah. So, you know what? I think it's one like can, a, I'm thinking like, who, who, Sprite, who's going to drink a fourth of a can? You know what I'm saying? Like, who's going to open a can of, of a, a soda and drink one fourth of it and then put it back? So I'm just assuming whoever created this drink would make a good dose for the whole can, not a can that you would want to break up in sevenths. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That makes yeah. no sense to me. So I just drank it and then later on found out that it had that. Maybe that's why, <laughs> maybe it, that's maybe that's why it didn't take off. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mean I'm only supposed to take sips out of a soda? Yeah. That's Nobody stupid. does that. Yeah, who yeah. does that? Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying this podcast. Head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of the free guides that we've made for our listeners. So we have guides on improving your squat, improving your mobility, developing your arms, getting a better core, burning body fat. We have guides for personal trainers and much more. They're all totally free. Mindpumpfree.com. Head over there. All right, enjoy the rest of this podcast. Our first caller is Audrey from Pennsylvania. Hey, Audrey, how can we help you? Hi, you guys. Um, so first of all, thank you for everything that you do. It's an honor to be talking with you. Um, so basically, I'm normally a very active person, and uh, I had emergency surgery back in September for appendicitis. And everything seemed to go well with that, but during my recovery, there seemed to be some type of nerve damage that had been done perhaps through the surgery or perhaps through uh, working with my sports doctor. Um, So what ended up happening is I had extreme 10 out of 10 pain most of the time uh, for several months up until about April when I was able to finally do things again. Um, What I did was I started with MAPS anabolic in pre-phase to get back into my lifting. And then I worked through MAPS anabolic backwards from phase three to phase one. So I get my question is, I'd like to get back some functional strength and my athleticism again. If I go into MAPS performance to accomplish that goal, can I start at phase one, even though I'm coming off of a similar the phase one of MAPS anabolic being heavy, going into a heavy phase of MAPS performance. Yeah, that's a a really good question. So for people who aren't familiar with the programs, phase one of MAPS anabolic and phase one of performance, they have some different exercises. It's a little bit different, but essentially you're lifting heavy weight, lower reps, you're doing longer rest periods. And so the question is like, okay, I'm moving out of that kind of a phase. Do I go straight into the similar phase into the next program? So my answer to that is yes, but I would shorten it. So I would do, you did three weeks of 
phase one and maps anabolic. Yeah, maybe two of performance. Yeah, do one or two in mass performance and then move on. And, and the reason why I'm saying that is because it's it is different in mass performance in terms of the programming. Yeah. The tempo is a bit different. A bit different. So I would go one okay. to two weeks phase one, then jump right into phase two of uh, performance, and then you should be totally good. I can tell you listen to the show too for quite a bit because you, I think we've talked we talked about that a long time ago, right? If somebody was injured, how I would train them, and I think I talked about Katrina training reverse, right? As far as anabolic, is that where you if that what made you? decide to do that uh i'm actually a personal trainer on the side and yeah I, but i've been listening to you guys for since 2014 so you're you're my my fitness mentors for sure i love it I um, love, we've been around that long yeah. <laughs> i'm sorry say again no i, I love i love that i mean i think that's just a, a smart decision after coming out of an injury Thank like you. that going right some people you know start with like a anabolic and go right into strength and i'm like you know if you're just getting back from recovering starting and so the audience that doesn't understand what we're talking about uh phase three of anabolic is higher reps right higher reps lower weight um, so I just think that's a smarter play, even though in the program, that's our third phase. If you're, if I had somebody who was recovering from something or just getting off of a surgery, I would rather them do lighter weight and more reps until we fully recover before we go after like a strength phase. So I think that was mm -hmm. a, a brilliant way to yeah. run that program. And, and I, I, you have access to prime pro and prime. I see in the question, cause those are the other things that I would say to add to your routine. Yeah. I did that as best I could during recovery. Uh, I was very, I was in a lot of pain. So even that was, was difficult for me, but I, I, I lost a lot of mobility. I lost a lot of weight. It was pretty terrible. <laughs> well, it's good to have you back. So you're hundred percent now. Uh, just about, I measure that by my deadlift weight last year, which was 260. Whoa. So I Whoa, consider myself at like not anywhere near a hundred percent, but I'm working at it. Cool. Well, yeah, no, do, do, do what we said. I go one, one week or two weeks in phase one of performance mm -hmm. and then keep moving. Those mobility sessions and performance, those mobility workouts are going to be really, really Oh my valuable. gosh. Yeah. yeah. Those are awesome. All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. Thank you guys very much. Have a good day. No problem. Yeah, that's cool. Um, it's cool to have a question from someone who's, who's got some experience and kind of understand because the goal always was to create these programs, have people follow them and then kind of learn their body and adjust them to their individual needs. Well, that's the, great that we have yeah. a podcast to explain it, you know, yeah. even further. And I think that's why it's important. That, like you, you're able to do both because we did have to write those kind of generally. Uh, but I love the way that she was able to, you know, create uh, that to be more specific to her needs. I, I talked about this right after Katrina's pregnancy. So, uh, you know, and I got a lot of questions around, you know, why did you tell her to go to phase three in, in reverse? And it's not that she couldn't have started in, in anabolic phase one. I mean, I could have had her do that and then just told her, hey, back off the intensity and don't try and max load anything and, and mm -hmm. take it easy. But it was just as it was easier for me to say, hey, just run the program in reverse. So I, that because what I'm looking at is I know that it's going to be 10 weeks or so before she even gets to really heavy lifting and she'll be lifting lighter weight for more reps, which is less risk when I have somebody who's, you know, in her case, just coming back from recovering from pregnancy, or in this case, somebody recovering from injury, I think it's just a, a smarter strategy. And that's, again, like to your point, this is how we always created these programs is not a one size fits all. It's, you know, you take the print core principles from them. It doesn't mean you can't modify and change. Our next caller is Brian from New Hampshire. What's up, Brian? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? First of all, just want to say thanks for all the content you put out. Uh, you guys are awesome. Uh, just nice to get that unbiased viewpoint and just you guys are willing to change your minds about anything. That's great. Um, so I think I know some people do a little bit of background. I think that would help um, with my question, help you guys answer it. So um, I retired from pro hockey about a year and a half ago in March 2020. And uh, I've always been into like mobility I do like the Kelly Starrett and stuff. Um, nice. Pavel Satsaline, um, just for like injury prevention my whole career. Um, been weightlifting since I was 10. Um, I've been training for hypertrophy for the last like four months just to kind of get a new fitness goal as opposed to like always doing performance stuff um, my whole life. Um, so recently I got uh, the job I work at now. Um, it's this company we make stretch suits called State Liberty. 
street. Um, but I'm trying to film a promo video where I'm doing a side split wearing one of the suits. Hmm. <laughs> I was wondering if like you guys think that those are conflicting goals. Like if I'm if I'm squatting twice a week, is that gonna like hinder my progress? If I'm trying to do side splits? No, it's not. It, there's a common misconception that strength training reduces uh, flexibility. Mm. It actually improves uh, functional flexibility. Now, the key is to practice your splits. Mm -hmm. So you're just trying to get into the splits. So static stretching is going to get you there um, yeah. the fastest and daily practice of the static stretching. But no, it's not going to hinder or prevent you from uh, being able to do uh, now, any type of strips. What do you guys think, though, about him doing some uh, specific exercises like uh, Cossack squats? Like, I think somebody who is working towards doing, like, the splits, I think that would be a, a – I and let's say he's squatting twice a week or whatever, I would actually pull, like, a, a traditional back squat out one day and then mm. do something like Cossack squats in there and really – uh, try and stretch your capacity on the range of motion and flexibility in that movement. So you try to connect and and, and create opportunities for strength out of that position. Yeah. yeah. I think that would be smart. Or even isometrically trying to get a bit lower with that and, and really connect. So it's not just passive flexibility you're after. You can, you know, gain some kind of active control over it. But yeah, I mean, it's, again, if, if, if that's your pursuit, it, it's not going to be a confliction as long as you know you're still trying to connect and make it a, a strength. And then also, what do you guys think about uh, him starting and ending the workout with that? Right. So if my goal is to get to this this uh, you know splits, I do my priming and mobility work and warm up to try and you know get to that place as far as close as I can. I do my strength training routine, and then even at the end of the routine, I do it again. I I work on that again. And yeah. No. I would I would do lots of static stretching at the end of the workout. I mean, if you're okay, mm -hmm. so when you do this when you you're doing this, this whatever, this photo, this performance. You're just gonna sit in the side splits, right? Yeah. Yeah. So static stretching is gonna get you there the fastest because um, okay. you don't need to be able to move or get out of it very quickly. You just. But I also want to like combine it with being able to being like strong in that range of motion. Okay. So I don't want to just sit. Like I could probably do that today if I sat in a stretch. You know. Oh uh, like well, then what Adam said is ideal. I mean, then then practice things like Cossack squats and side okay, lunges yeah, and yeah, stuff like that to kind of work on that. And then when you do the static stretches and your side splits, when you get into that position, activate your inner thigh and outer thigh muscles. I mean, really, if you just turn them on when you're in that position, that'll help yeah. you connect with that that really wide range of motion. Out of curiosity, were you a goalie? No, I wasn't. Okay. I, was just, uh, I was a center. Yeah. Okay. Only reason why I'm asking is I know goalies have like tremendous flexibility in, yeah. in hockey. Yeah, so yeah, so what's this in your question about having a flat ass? We have to uh, address this. <laughs> Oh, no, it was a girlfriend uh, kind of like six months after I retired, kind of made a comment about it. And I was like, uh, it just kind of hit home. I was like, oh, and I was back in the squat rack the next day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That one cuts deep. Yeah, I that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, do that. And you know what? Do you have uh, Maps Prime Pro, Brian? I do not, no. Okay, there's great stuff in Maps Prime Pro that'll help you develop more connection to greater ranges of motion. So we'll send that over to you. Okay, awesome. Yeah, really appreciate it. No problem, man. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. His girlfriend's mean, huh? <laughs> <laughs> My girl will tell me too if I'm mean. Like, so don't, I don't I, you want like honest feedback? Yeah, I yeah. But do you say that to you? Would you ever say that to your girl? Like, oh, you lost your ass. Um, yeah, we're, I pretty, mean, we're pretty. You brutal. would? Oh yeah, no. Uh, Katrina okay. and I are. Pretty I wouldn't say it like honest. directly like that, but I would definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hint. Right. At it, right? I, I don't know if I'd be like, hey, honey, you're losing your ass. Depends I, on the relationship. Was, right? yeah, yeah. No, she's. I mean, one of the things I love about her is that she uh, she loves that about me is that I just I have no filter and have a really hard Gotta time. Keep it real. Yeah, bullshitting. So if she asked me, I'm going to tell her the answer. Um, you know, our buddy uh, Jordan Syatt is uh, working on this right now. Have you guys? I don't know how quick, how often you guys click over on and, glute gains. No, on splits. Uh oh, splits. Yeah, he's on. I don't, and I, I, I should probably look more into exactly uh, what the reason behind it or whatever. But I saw him post maybe I don't know. I want to say three weeks ago or so that, he, and he showed a video of like how far he could get right now, which uh, was yeah. terrible. And then he's showing his progress. So maybe also check into that, you know. So I don't know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, George, if you are, or this is who's who's what's the I name? Feel like of the one guy? of us needs to do it. Brian, down it's, Brian. Brian. it's Adam. So Brian, why don't you check out our, our buddy Jordan Syatt. I think it's Syatt Fitness is what his yeah. uh, his his handle is, and 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 Jordan's a pretty smart trainer himself, and I think he's actually working on that. So maybe follow yeah. along his journey. Yeah, too. the splits were cool for a second. Then remember Van Dam, he would like bust them out. Dude, <laughs> I never got that. 
like like that's his flex you know yeah. like oh hey i could go on a countertop like this yeah like, <laughs> yeah but how hard do you kick bro well i think that i think the the flex on that was that he could do that and he was buff right yeah, yeah. yeah. i don't well, think I mean, he would have been yeah and he's handsome. in good shape and handsome yeah, yeah. and he, and, the, the, and he, he could also going for and he could also do a 360 round kick with the we'd have to get that? a girl's opinion on that like does that do something for you I don't know. I think anything he did at that time yeah. would have done something Just for him. Yeah. Yep. Check me out. Our next caller is George from North Carolina. Hey, what's up, George? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, well, thank you for allowing me to ask a question. Very grateful here and love you guys' show. I've been listening for a long time now. Thank you. Nice. I uh, just wanted to go ahead and ask. Um, this question is actually on behalf of my wife. Uh, she is pretty much my workout partner and she works out with me consistently or did before COVID. So I just wanted to get her a little bit help here. So she pretty much has worked out in uh, hypertrophy setting for a few years now and also just constantly going in between uh, you know standard calories and a calorie deficit. So I just wanted to get your guys' opinion and help uh, her moving forward to really get over that mental aspect of increasing the calories to be in a quote unquote bulking stage. And then also to focus really on building strength then instead of just trying to work out to you know, look a certain way. Yeah. What, so what was the name Sal of the episode that we did uh, just recently? Was it called why women should bowl? Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, we just she, did it. We did a whole thing like perfect for her. If you haven't heard that already, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Have her listen to that episode. Cause the whole episode was dedicated to why women should bulk or the benefits of bulking. Maybe Doug or Andrew could look up what one that, what number that was. I know we did it in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, obviously look, here's the deal. The, the benefits you'll get from, from feeding her body to build strength is she's going to have a faster metabolism. It's going to make getting lean much easier in the future and much easier to maintain. Of course, more muscle means more curve. A lot of women are afraid of building muscle because they think it's going to make them look not feminine. This is not true, except in really, really rare extreme cases, building muscle just adds more curve. You have a rounder butt. You have better posture. You have a nice, tight midsection, um, a nice hamstring. So... Those are the, the benefits, but the, the problem is when you're communicating kind of to somebody who's got kind of a psychological issue with uh, a particular pursuit and you're trying to give them logic, it doesn't always work. So really I would say, and this, if she was my client, this is what I would do. I would say, okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to want you to take your scale and I want you to put it in the closet. You're not going to weigh yourself for the next two to three months. We're not going to weigh you at all. All we're going to focus on is how strong you are. That's the goal. Let's get you strong. Now at the end of two months or three months, then we'll test your body fat, we'll see your lean body masses, and we'll see what we've done within that period of time. But for the next few months, don't weigh yourself, and we're just going to focus on strength. And if she can just do that, that should be enough to get her out of that mental block. George, the episode number is episode 1565, so 1565. Um, and I would... I would really point her in that direction. We could sit here and give you all these like little one-liner tips, but I know how hard this is to convince. I mean, mm -hmm. the reason why we did that episode and and wanted to talk about it full of, for a full hour was because it was one of the most difficult things for me to do as a coach. Re getting a client, a uh, female client that uh, would come in and tell me, "Adam, I want to lean out or look this look a certain way." And I assess their their diet. I assess their what's going on with them. And you know, almost always, what I want to do is increase calories and focus on gaining and mm -hmm. quote unquote bulking. And that just scares the shit out of all of yeah. them. And it would it would be quite the process, uh, even as a professional, right? She she's coming to me, hiring me. I'm supposed to be the professional, so I can I totally probably know how you feel uh you know as the husband trying to convince your wife to do this and how challenging that is um so i would i would listen to that episode because we really unpack all of that and we we give all the points and the yeah, reason it goes it goes against like everything you hear in pop culture every kind of like magazine that you know women are reading mm -hmm. uh all the marketing out there that's just dog shit and so the, that that is something that we're always having to address uh you know with new clients coming in and, and having these type of goals so great episode to really 
uh, you know, turn her on to 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 understand, uh, you know, better how how this will will really benefit her. Yeah, and, and you know, here's the deal too: if she can do this for about two or three months, usually at the end of that period, they're convinced. Usually after you know sixty to ninety days, you're showing them, oh my gosh, you're eating five hundred more calories a day. I just tested your body fat. It didn't go up, but you gained some muscle. You have a faster metabolism, or you got leaner. That sometimes that would that would even happen. Wow, it looks like your body fat percentage actually went down, and you're eating more food, and you're stronger, and you feel good. Um, and oftentimes at that point they would say, "Okay, now I trust the process." It's just they need that proof yeah. initially, and that's the hard. The first step is the hard. I, I remember actually uh, even kind of lying and, and like uh, to my clients to get them to do this. When what I mean by that is, <laughs> like I would be obviously as a coach, I'm tracking all their calories, and so you know, I, let's say I'm training Susie, and Susie's eating. 1500 calories she's frayed to death of bulking and stuff like that instead of me even t- terming what we're doing as bulking or even letting her know give her a meal plan and yeah i just <laughs> i just i would add i would just say you know what i i really want to see if i add this to your diet if you notice a difference in your skin and your mood and your hair and your energy and i like i would tie it to something totally different and then i would just add a couple hundred calories and it could be like a, an, an apple and in 10 almonds or something and i would just keep doing that incrementally until i've got to a point uh-huh. where i bump to, to like you said, like 500 calories. Say, guess what we've done, you know, and then explain it. I afterwards. tricked you. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. You know what I used to say? I used to say this. I would have these conversations and then I would look at them and I'd say, look, I'm going to ask you this one time to put your trust in me. And I promise I'll never have to ask for, you, for your trust again. Mm. And that sometimes would work because I think at that point, the person just wants to give up and give control to someone else uh, to some extent. And that would work sometimes, but I, I, yeah, but this, I, this I is feel tough. you, George. This is yeah, hard yeah, this is tough being the husband. You know your wife the best, right? Whatever <laughs> method that is going to hey, work. Hey, look, if she does, if she, by the way, if she starts doing this, you cannot compliment her enough, okay? You got to encourage yeah, totally. what's going on. So she starts to eat yeah, more. She starts to lift. But, oh, my God, honey, you look incredible. Wow, look yeah. at your butt. My God, you feel so tight. Just to kind of you know make her feel good about no the changes. that's a, that's a great point because the next hurdle you know that you would have as a, as a coach or in this case you know a, you know workout partner is then she does start to build a little bit of muscle and but then clothes might start fitting a little tighter yep. and, and right mm-hmm. away they start freaking out like oh my god my jeans don't fit I, I told you I did not want to do this stupid bulk and now I'm getting fatter or yeah. bigger and they it's mm-hmm. like and so Sal's point is so on point you have to. Uh, you know, c- continue to reassure that you you love the way her body is mm-hmm. shaping up and Looking changing. Look, definition. You're right, right. So make sure you are complimenting through that process because you know once you do finally convince them that it's smart and a good idea for them to bulk, then they start doing it, and then the next thing they do is start saying like, "Oh my god, my shirts mm-hmm. or my pants or something's yeah. fitting tight. I'm, I'm getting yeah. too big." Be a little manipulative. <laughs> yeah, that's all. <laughs> a little. Uh, Awesome. Good advice, guys. And yeah, I definitely did listen to that episode. I pointed her towards that one uh, as soon as it came out because I just knew how beneficial and how it made me think about things uh, differently. I was a trainer in a big box gym for a year before COVID happened. And I just realized that most of the women clients that I had, they were listening to me over listening to any of their other family members. So that was my main reason for reaching out to you guys is oh, just yeah. to, you know, get an answer from an outside source because being the husband, you know, I can only do so much before that's true. Before she tells me to go away. That's, <laughs> that's true. Right. That's what's, it, what's, what's her What's your wife's name? Uh, Kirsty. Kirsty. Christy or Kirsty? K I R S T Y. All right, Kirsty. This is Sal from Mind Pump. I know you know who I am. You listen to my podcast. I want you to bulk. Do a slow bulk for about two or three months. Focus on strength. Don't weigh yourself anymore. Trust me, it's going to yeah, work. You Watch what this. happens at the end. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Is there any uh, specific program that I should point her to? I, I have anabolic. I was thinking maybe that would be a that, good one. That, that's perfect. That, that's ideal. That's right the there. one. Do that. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate you. Thanks, George. Boy, that's a hard one. I tell you. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's that's a hard one as a as a trainer and I a know. coach. I mean, that was let that, alone your husband. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's. I mean, it, I it took me over three years before I could even get a hold of Katrina's diet and, and training. You know, even even with all my experience, her knowing me, seeing everything that I'd done in fitness, yep. uh, I didn't even touch that area because it's it's just tough when you're when you're the family when you're in when you're inside that. What is what's that? What's the saying, Doug? Hard to be a prophet in your own. What's the in your own country? Yeah. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a tough one. Our next caller is Eric from California. What's up, Eric? How can we help you? Hey, what's going on, guys? How you guys doing? Good, good. good. Where in California are you? 
Uh, I'm actually in San Rafael, in the North Bay. Oh, not oh, far from go. us at all. Yeah. yeah. How can we help you, all buddy? Right, so, uh, love the content, guys. Uh, I really do appreciate you guys having me on the show. Uh, so to give a little background, I played collegiate golf from 2015 to 2019. And I was going through a lot of personal issues back then, which we made me turn to food and alcohol to kind of fill the void. Uh, I went into freshman year at 5'7", 150 to 200 pounds by the end of my sophomore year. Uh, we had a trainer and we did strength training workouts with the team, but I kind of just ate so much and drank so much that I just gained a bunch of body fat. Uh, and I wasn't really going through the workouts with intensity either. I was just kind of going through the movements so that I didn't get kicked off the team. Uh, I, I was able to get past my personal issues and really started to get into resistance training by the end of my junior year. Um, and my buddy Gavin Bean actually turned me on to you guys and I was able to get down to a healthy 158. Uh, lately I've been training more for aesthetics, doing more of a push pull leg split five to six days a week for no more than an hour a day. Uh, I don't do any other specific cardio other than walking and I roughly get around 10,000 steps a day. Uh, and currently on a bulk eating around 2,800 to 3,000 calories a day. So for my main question, now that I've gotten down to a body that I'm happy with, uh, I'm just focusing on getting stronger. And although I'm definitely improving in my lifts, uh, it's not necessarily translating to more distance on the golf course. Uh, if anything, I'm hitting the ball shorter now compared to when I was fat and had little to no muscle. So what are some specific exercises or mobility movements that I can do to gain more distance on the golf course? Yeah. That's great. very common. By yeah. The way. Great mm -hmm. question. So here's the deal. Okay. Um, I'm probably stronger than most, uh, golf golfers. And I thought he was going to say that. I can't I hit. the strongest <laughs> golfer ever. I am the strongest person <laughs> yeah. in the room right now. Yeah, listen. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, we couldn't <laughs> help it, dude. Yeah. Yeah, listen, go ahead. stop speaking so much truth. <laughs> no, so, so check this out. I, I, I'm i definitely stronger than most golfers. I cannot hit not even a, a tenth of the distance that a golfer can because it's technique. Yeah. It's skill and technique. So gaining strength in the gym isn't going to translate if your technique is now thrown off because you're not – you're not getting them to connect. You're not working with them together. So Especially te golf. Technique oh, yeah. is, is number one. Now, if you want to do movements to improve upon your technique, a lot of it's going to be rotational. A lot of it's going to be mobility-based. It's not going to be bench presses and deadlifts and squats. Those are good for general health and strength, but if your goal is to hit the ball further, I would focus more on skill and technique and then maybe focus on rotation and focus on increasing a range of motion yeah. and connection to more rotation. Something like, you know, windmills and, and you know, looking into uh, getting that thoracic rotation and, and just being able to be more fluid with your body because of the focus being on strength for a while and not really emphasizing, you know, skill and the technique that you had in place previous to that, uh, just getting back into that mentality and, and, and allowing, you know, your shoulders to be more loose and free uh, and mobile uh, along with your hips and, and kind of work your way down the joints and, and put a lot more emphasis on, on, you know, freeing up your body to be able to move fast and loose. I mean, something's got to give here. Uh, you're not just a regular golfer. Uh, you, you're a, a high level golfer, which was probably playing a lot more golf than what you're probably currently playing right now. Yeah, you're lifting weights five or six days a week. How many days a week are you pra are you golfing and practicing your skill and technique? Uh, probably like one to two days a week. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. your answer. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, mean, and so like six days. you're getting great results. I mean, your strength is going up. You've built the body that you want. You still want to get some more strength. So you, you've just, you've completely went from the guy who wasn't even strength training really much at all, or just kind of going through the motions and playing a ton of golf to now all of a sudden building a physique that you like the way, not only the way it looks and performs, and then also thinking that you're going to keep up the same uh, level of and and someone like you is going to see more discrepancy than the average person. An average guy like m myself who golfs every once in a while, or like my buddies who golf once every other week, they might not see that much of a discrepancy in this. But you are at such a high level uh, with the sport that this makes a huge difference, especially since you're you're getting bulkier and strong or building more muscle and practicing the skill a lot less so it, it, something's got to give here you got to be either one um okay with probably losing a little bit of the golf skill and, and and seeing that slide back as you continue to build strength and to get stronger and to look better or you go man i'm going to scale back a little bit of this 
strength training and I'm going to in- introduce more skills training back into golf or more days of golf every week and then so I can improve yeah. that. But to be to be clear, the resistance training is not why you're losing your that's distance. Right. It sounds like that it's when I the say lack it, right? of practice right. uh, of golf. Okay, so okay. it's not the strength training. It's because you're you're golfing once or twice a week. Now, if you want to really do well with golf, uh, then I would flip that. I'd go resistance training once or twice a week and golf every single mm-hmm. day, mm-hmm. and then watch what happens. Or just keep doing what you're doing and be okay with the fact that you're you're not going to golf as good, but you'll look good. You know. Which, by the way, and we we just had a question uh, earlier today that was related to this that don't be surprised you could actually still get stronger and only train once or twice a week in the gym yep so if you really want to get better at that at your golf game again uh, do exactly what sal is saying get back to playing four or five times a week and strength train full body one or two times a week uh and then like a very like a match adding those kin stretches i'm telling you man to be able to ramp up that and generate more force you know out of those out of those hips uh be able to transfer that up you know in through your entire body and really connect you know from fingertips to toes uh you know you're going to reconnect and and have more of that uh, athleticism back eric are you following uh maps performance no that's no, yeah, that's the program you got it yeah that's the routine so doug doug will send that over to you so doug will send maps performance oh, over to you appreciate that guys. that's the foundation that but uh, again it, i would mold it and and shape it more specific for you since the mobility exercises are general like the guys are saying i would do more rotational type things that are going to uh, translate over into golf for my mobility stuff. I would also right. scale back on the amount of days based off of if I want to see more more progress in golf, or I would leave it the way it is if I care more about uh, building strength yeah. and muscle. How many how many days a week were you golfing when you were uh, competing in golf in, in college? Oh yeah, we were playing every single day, yeah, uh, yeah. about five to six days a so, week. So I'm, literally, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna re, I'm gonna give you a very straight answer. Okay, whatever you want to get better at, do that the most. <laughs> so yeah. that's it. Bottom line. So <laughs> that's the okay. formula. Essentially, what you're asking is, hey, I used to golf every day. Now I golf once a week, and I can't hit the ball as well. And now, now the answer is quite obvious, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. All right. Cool. All right. Well, we'll send you over Maps Performance. We appreciate the call. Well, thanks for answering my question, guys. I really appreciate you guys. You got awesome. it, man. No problem. That's it's so it's so funny to me. I get it because people, you know, they want to do two things at one time and they don't connect the two. But mm-hmm. if you did, if you were at a high level doing something five days a week, you move it down to one day a week. Are you going to see a decrease in your performance, especially if you're at a high level? Of course, yeah. of well, course it's, you are. It's the it's the you num- your practice. It's the number one thing we get. Yeah. This is, I mean, this is uh, the same question worded a different way. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, every week we have this. I have this goal and this goal. I want them both. Yeah, yeah. Well, how do I do it? And it's, you know, when, especially when they are so different, you know, yeah. it's not, uh, the, the, there's not a lot that he's going to run marathons, but I want to be a bodybuilder. Yeah. So <laughs> you just something's cool. got to get, and it doesn't mean that you can't be kind of a buff guy that can run. You know what I'm saying? You're but, just not going to be your peak at either that's one. That's right. You're right. not going to be the best version of yourself at running. You're not going to be the best version. And the same thing with him. He's not going to be the best golfer and also the buffest he's ever been. It's just he's now focused his adaptation yeah. in that direction. So that's what he's going to And get. by the way, this is how resistance training gets a bad rap, is that people will right. do this. They think it's bad. Yeah. yeah, and then they're like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm not as flexible as I used yeah, to so be. it's taken away from their skills training. Yeah, it must be the strength training. It's like, no, you used to stretch every day and now it's one, it's one day a week. That's why your flexibility is going down not only that but you have to integrate the strength and muscle into your skill you know look i'll tell you what if you're watching this right now and i slapped 20 pounds of muscle on your body with strength your skill and technique for whatever you're highly skilled at would decrease because you have a new body right. you're not used to this 20 pound heavier body that you're moving around you have to integrate and, the two and you're not practicing with it too. that's what i'm saying right. you got to integrate the two so whatever you want to be the best at that's what you do the most. That's just a very simple uh, answer with that. Look, if you like Mind Pump, you got to head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free stuff. We give away all kinds of free information on everything from burning body fat to building muscle to improving your health. Again, mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. An important part of development, if you want somebody to be able to do transfer, okay, so if you want someone to do the same thing over and over and over again, then okay. Like you can have them train by doing the same thing over and over and over again. But if you want transfer, which is their ability to take those skills and apply them to new challenges, which of course is like the essence of not only athletic creativity, but 